Hi, my name is Roger Vini, and today I will be illustrating to you what Kirchhoff's rules are. Uh, first rule is the loop rule, states, which states that any voltage going in would be equal, or the voltage going out would be equal to zero. The second rule is the junction rule, which states that a current going from here to here, or from here to here, would be equal to the current, the total current which would come out over here. All right. This diagram right here represents a circuit that we put together. Right here, we have our first battery, which is 9 volts. Down here, we have our second battery, which is 9 volts. We also have three resistors across the circuit. The first resistor is 82 ohms. The second resistor is also 82 ohms. And the third resistor is 2.2 kilo ohms. Now we're going to break this current, or we're going to break this circuit into two different parts. The bottom part, we're going to allow the current to run in this direction. This means that the current will leave, or we're going to say the current goes to the battery this way and runs along this wire, up this wire, across here, down here, and back. On the top portion, we're going to have the current running in this direction. Now these directions we picked our own directions. It could have been going the other way, but we're going to pick this way, and I'll tell you why now. With the current running in this direction, we have one current going this way, and we're going to call this current I1, which is coming through this battery. From on the top portion, we're going to have I2 coming around this way. So that means it's going to be coming this way on this portion of the circuit. We have I2. Now, Kirchhoff's law states that two currents enter one junction and add together to equal a different current. So we're going to have I1 plus I2. They both enter this junction and create I3 which is going in this direction. So I3 goes across here, and it comes into this junction right here, and it, these, this junction is I3 coming across here, and it exits, and it splits back off into I2 and I3. Okay, over here, we're gonna start our equations. We have I1 plus I2, come together to equal I3. So we have I3 is equal to I1 plus I2. Now we're going to pick any portion on the circuit to start. We're going to start at the 9 volts. Now voltage is always positive when you're going in the direction of the current. And um, the resistance is always negative when you're going in the same direction as the current. So we're going to start right here and go in the same direction as the current. So we're going to have 9 volts, and then it's coming around here. We don't have any resistors, so it breaks off into I3. Now we're getting to resistance, so it's going to be minus, since it's resistance going in the same direction as the current, and it's going to be I3 times 82 ohms. Now we come around here and come down because we're still on the bottom portion and it breaks off into I3 and I2 at this junction right here and right here we're in I1, um, excuse me, that should be I1, right here in I1 and that's across the resistance and it's going in the same direction so it'll be minus and it'll be I1 times 2200 ohms. And it comes back down, and we end at 9 volts, which we already recorded here. So we're done with the bottom loop. At the top loop, we're going to start at the 9 volts again. So we have positive 9 volts, because we're going in the same direction as the current. We're going to come around here. We get to a negative, since we're going in the same direction as the current. We have a resistor. It's I2. So we have I2 times 82 ohms. And we come down here. It breaks off into I3. Or it goes I2 meets I1 and creates I3, so we get to I3. We go across that resistor again, which is in the same direction, so it'll be minus, and it'll be I3 times 82 ohms. And we come back over here, then we go up into I2 again, but there's no resistors, and we end at the 9 volts, which we already recorded here. So that's how we set up this portion of the equation.
Uh, for the next part, we need to actually solve the system of equations. And one way we can do that is to set it up in, as a matrix of the coefficients of all the equations. So to do this, it's easiest if we uh, align everything so we have our uh, I1s and I2s and I3s all in the same column. So if we take the first equation, we can change it to um, And then once you have this set up this way, it's very easy to then transport, transport uh, them into an augmented, an augmented matrix. So you can take your coefficients and And here we have our augmented matrix of all the uh, coefficients in front of our currents. And now you can solve, uh, solve for each of the voltages by putting this into a reduced row echelon form. Okay, I'm going to put this information inside this matrix into the calculator to get the current. So here are our results right here. As you can see, all these currents ended up being positive, which means the directions that we chose are the way that they're actually going in real life. Now we've made a, um, an actual model of the uh, circuit over here, so we'll cut and go to that now. All right, so here is the, uh, the circuit we have set up here. So here is our uh, 2.2 thousand ohm resistor, and then these other two are the 82 ohm resistors. So now if we want to check to see the current, uh, normally you would be able to use the current setting on the multimeter, but unfortunately uh, the fuse blew out in the multimeter, so we're going to have to use the, vo uh, the voltmeter part of the multimeter to find the voltage across each of these and then use Ohm's law to convert it. So if we measure the voltage across here, You can see it's around around four. So I'll record that. The voltage across this. Is around four point one. So around four point one, maybe four point one five. Then on this larger resistor, we have about 4.6 volts. Now we're going to uh, cut and show you how uh, we can figure out the actual amperage using Ohm's law. Mm -hmm. But for this part of the, of the project, I will be explaining explaining Ohm's law and explaining the particular numbers that we received and how that translates to how we got I three. Ohm's law is basically V equals I R. But since we have V and since we have R, 
and we're trying to find I. The equation is, is rearranged to V over R. And for how this translate is, we got I1, which equals V1, V, I mean 4.15 over 82 ohms resist, restriction, resistor. I2 was 4.6 over 2,200 ohms resistance. So for I3, we add the numbers that we got from I1 and I2, and that's how we receive I3, which would be, let's see, six, plus zero. I three is basically I two and I one combined or plus. So zero five zero six zero nine seven five six plus zero zero two zero nine zero nine one and it equals out to zero it equals out to zero two seven zero six zero six seven and the reason why the numbers are slightly off and not precise the error came in is when the battery shorted out and lost energy that's what made the that's what made the whole thing not precise and that's how we got i3